Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Joplin server on Portainer. This makes it to where you can sync your Joplin application, uh, your notes and your to-dos, everything like that, to the local server, and it'll be on your home lab. So uh, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So let's get back to your registered programming. So this will be installed today, um, jo Joplin. It makes it to where you can sync your notes uh, to the Joplin server, which we'll be installing. Um, uh, this makes it to where you can keep all your notes on your local uh, home lab instead of being on a cloud or anything like that. Um, a, a Joplin is an excellent open source note taking application with plenty of features. You can take notes, make to do lists, sync your notes across devices. You will need to download the app. Uh, they got one for Windows, Mac, um, uh, AM1, a Linux, a Google Play, and App Store. Um, this is what it looks like. It's got a nice UI to it. And then multimedia notes, uh, images, vi videos, PDFs, audio files are supported. Ma math expressions, diagrams. So that's what will be installed today. So I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go over the search over here. I'm going to type in uh, Joplin. And then now we're going to go to how to install Joplin on Portainer right here. I'm going to click it. Then I'm going to go to Docker Compose. So version 3 of Docker Compose file format is being used. I'm going to set some services. And then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Joplin. Th this is the service name. And then the container name is going to be called Big Bear Joplin. This is so uh, that Docker doesn't have to generate a random name for the container. Uh, the, the image is coming off Docker by default because there's no URL before this. And this is the Docker image. This is the Docker image tag. Restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then the environment variables... So the app port is 22300. Uh, that's on the container port. So it, 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 it would run with the right side of this. And then the app base URL, we will need to replace localhost with the portainer's IP address. And I'll be going over that. Um, the DB client is set to PostgreSQL. And then the Postgres uh, credentials are here. So uh, what this is doing is this service is connecting to the Postgres that, uh, uh, ser service down at the bottom with these credentials. Then it's saving all the data in this service right here, the, the Postgres QL database. Um, the ports are uh, uh, 22,300 on the host. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it. And then on the container is uh, uh, the same port. So do not change the containers port, but you can change the host port. The networks are Big Bear Joplin network. And this is so the uh, this service up here can connect to the Big Bear a jo a Joplin a DB with the name. Um, so it, it does depend on the database service down here to be, uh, to be up. And then the configuration for the PostgreSQL data. That, database service is right here so the container name is going to be called big bear joplin db just like what the service name is this is so that docker doesn't have to generate a random name the image is coming off of docker by default because there's no year before this it's postgres and then 4.2 uh 14.2 i mean and then the volumes so on the host side is a local volume that's defined down at the bottom and then varlib postgresql data this is the containers path. Do not change that. And then restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then the environment variables, uh, these are the credentials you set on first starting up this container. You cannot change these cred uh, credentials after the c container is made. 
you will need to go in there and use SQL. So these credentials should align with these right here. And networks, I'm going to put it in the Big Bear Joplin network. So it's in the same network. And then the networks. So I'm going to define the Big Bear Joplin network right here. It's going to be a bridge network. And then volumes, the PostgreSQL data. This is the where, where, where the volume is stored. So, uh, so it's defined down here. It's a local volume. The, 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 the driver is local. So now I'm going to go up here to copy raw file. Then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this setup installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to start on my portainer. I'm going to go to local, stacks, and then add stack up here. And now I'm going to put a stack name of um, Joplin stack. And then, so stacks are just using Docker and Pose underneath to deploy it. It's using the Docker engine. So I'm going to go down to the web editor right here. I'm going to paste in the Docker and Pose that I explained over in Big Bird Video Assets. And then once you do that, you're going to come down here to deploy the stack. So I'm going to click it. Now, what this is doing is this downloading the Docker image off the registry, getting it extracted, getting it up with Docker and Pose underneath, because this does use the Docker engine, like I just said. And um, it's also creating the volumes and the network. So th this can take a bit. So we got it up and running and stack successfully deployed. So now I'm going to go to the UI. So my portainer's IP address and then the port it should be listening on. So now I'm going to go to it. So now you'll get the invalid origin right here. So I'm going to copy this IP import, go back into my portainer, and I'm going to go to the stacks, and then now the editor, and now I'm going to go to app base URL right here. I'm going to paste in the uh, the uh, the IP import that I copied over in the UI. Should look like this. Uh, you could have a different IP address and if you change the port. So now I'm gonna say update the stack. And then now if you go back into the UI, it should uh, be working. So now we see the login. So now I'm gonna go over the portainers uh, UI for stacks and containers. So if you go into the stack right here, I, I, you go up here and you'll see editor and you can edit the uh, Docker Compose like we just did with the app base URL. And um, when you go down here to update the stack, if you saw that there was a repull image and redeploy, that means it's going to repull the current image tag off of the registry and get it redeployed. So if the developer pushes to the latest tag, uh, if you're using the latest tag or any other tag, if the developer pushes an update to that exact tag, then you can get the updates down by check marking that and then pre pressing the update. Um, you can go back to stacks and now we have stack duplication slash migration. You, you have actions for the stack like stop the stack, delete the stack, create template from the stack. You can see containers in the stack and you can go into the containers and you can see actions up here. So start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate slash edit. You can see container status and how long it's been running. Uh, logs down here, this is great for debugging. Um, I inspect, stats, console attach, the access control, create image, and then container details like the host port and the container port, uh, the command, the entry point, the environment variables, the, the labels, the restart policy, and you can change the restart policy as well and then press the update button. You can see the connected networks, so Big Bear Droplin a network, the one that we created, uh, the one that we defined in the Docker Compose, it created it down here. So um, you can also go back to the stacks and go, go into the stack again, and uh, this is the same options over here as well. So that that's a little bit about uh, Portainer's UI. So now I'm going to go to the Portainer's IP address and then the port. So now I'm going to go to it. 
So now the default email address is admin at localhost. And then the password is admin. Then now I'm going to log in. So now you can change your default uh, admin password here because it's insecure. So you can change it, put put, put it in uh, the, uh, the password, uh, your new password, and then uh, repeat the password. You can also change the email address and the full name. Um, you will need to go download uh, a Joplin application from here. And then you go into configuration and then synchronization and then change it to Joplin server. And then you'll use the IP and port. And then your username and password that you logged into this UI or you can create a new user. Um, now you can see the items that are being synced. And you can go to the admin and um, you can go to users and then add a user. A user deletions or a move select to jobs, a, ta a task, and then the emails. So um, if you want to get to this screen right here, instead of having this bar up here, you can go to the, the admin one up here, then get to your profile and change the password. So that's a little bit about Joplin servers a UI. So I just went over step-by-step step on getting Joplin server running on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.